Hello students, today we are going to learn about the life cycle of animals. So let's start with some questions. Now, have you seen a hen and its chicks? Do chicks also look like hens? Do you think hens also give birth to their chicks? Let's see. This picture we see that chicks are also very much like hens. But they do not give birth to chicks. Instead, hens lay eggs and hatch them. Now, what do you think hatch means? The hen sits on its egg to warm them so that the chicks inside can be grown. This process is called a chicken hatching its egg. We know that there are similarities in looks of goat and its kid. However, in some animals, the young ones that grow into an adult animal looks very different from the young animals. This type of change in form is called metamorphosis. The example of metamorphosis is caterpillar and butterfly. So let's study in detail about the growth of butterfly. As a butterfly grows, it passes through four stages. These stages are first egg. Second stage is larva, third stage is pupa and fourth stage in which a butterfly is fully grown in adult is called adult stage. Now a caterpillar stays in chrysalis for next 11 to 12 days and it does not eat anything for these 11 to 12 days. However, important transformation which turns a caterpillar into a plain tiger butterfly takes place in these 11 to 12 days inside the chrysalis. And when the growth of a plain tiger butterfly is completed, it emerges from the chrysalis. Now, the plain tiger butterfly has fully grown and it has four attractive wings and six long legs. All the butterflies goes from these stages to become an adult butterfly. Hi students. Yesterday we completed our first chapter that is the life cycle of animals. Today we are going to start a new chapter that is the interrelationship between living things. So Let's start. All human beings have many needs like food, water, air, clothes and shelters. All these needs are met in our surroundings. We need plants and animals to satisfy many of our needs. Let us first study about animals. Insects like honeybees, butterflies, bumblebees, etc. drinks the nectar of flowers. Birds like hummingbirds also drink the nectar of flowers. Basically, we have three main seasons. That is summer, winter and rainy season. Now, let's see how rain affects animals. Animals like frog are easily seen in rainy season, but in winter and summer they are nearly disappeared. Do you know why? When the rainy season ends and winter com makes a comeback, it is not good for frogs. So they go the underground for a long period of time. They sleep for 7 to 8 months and come back on ground in rainy season.
Hi students, yesterday we learned the effects of rainy season on plants and animals. Today we will see 12 fun facts about different animals. So let's start. Fun fact number one. A goldfish will lose their color and turn white if they are kept in dark and not exposed to any sunlight. Fun fact number two. Dogs don't like the sound of rain as it hurts their sensitive ears. Hi students. Yesterday we saw 12 fun facts about different animals. Today, we are going to start a new chapter that is the storage of water. So, let's start. The first way of storing water is wells. A well is created into the ground by digging, driving or drilling. These wells are created to access water that is seeped in the ground. The well water is drawn up by containers like bucket or by a mechanical or hand pump. Today, we will see three modern ways of storing water. Hi students! Yesterday, we learned the modern ways of water storage. Today, we will start a new chapter that is water safe for drinking. So let's start. Today we will understand some properties of water with examples. If we take some glasses of water and add common salt, sugar, washing powder, sand, sawdust and turmeric powder in different glasses of water and stir it with a stick or spoon, we will see that salt, sugar and washing powder dissolves in water while sand, sawdust and turmeric powder do not dissolve in water. First, we will learn some new words. First, potable water. Water that does not endanger our health in any way when we drink it is called potable water. Second, microorganisms. A living thing that cannot be seen by the naked eyes or even with a magnifying glass is called microorganism. Third, microscope. An instrument for looking at very tiny things which we cannot see with our eyes or even through a magnifying glass is called microscope. There are numerous kind of microorganisms around us. They are in soil, water, air, rocks. That is, they are everywhere and anywhere. Even if harmful microorganisms are present in water, we are not able to see them. Now, though the water with such microorganisms looks transparent, would it be safe for drinking? No, it won't be. We need some methods to make water safe for drinking. 